Ever wanted to visit the mythical city of Atlantis in VR? Of course you have for Christ's sake, who the hell wouldn't? And why not solve a few puzzles while guided through a supernatural narrative experience at the same time? Let's dive into Wright, the Eye of Atlantis and find out more. Immersed Robot When first firing up Wright, I was presented with a very nice title screen with a crisply textured wall and the settings menu beckoning me to discover more. One of the first things I noticed was the lack of experiential VR customization. There were only options to change graphical settings between three presets, in addition to language preferences. Undeterred, I decided to give the game the benefit of doubt and jump in. The narrative begins with a seemingly futuristic setting, where users are able to travel back to locations for an immersive experience using some unexplained future technology. Finding myself in a nicely rendered scene, I followed the tutorial which explained the basics in a simple and pleasing way. On a quick side note, the PR company representing the developers informed me that the game is only currently officially supporting the Oculus Rift, Rift S, and HTC Vive with updates for Quest and Quest 2 coming later this year. I was playing through using a Valve Index and can say that I didn't really experience any noticeable issues in doing so. At first I didn't think there was any snap turn option, but it turns out that this feature is not on the index thumbsticks, but rather on the touchpad. Locomotion is firmly settled on teleport, and I didn't find any options to enable smooth movement. Indeed, the game seems to hark back to traditional room scale mechanics for the most part, which I actually found to be extremely enjoyable. I miss the old sense of using room scale technology to its advantages, and this game certainly plays into that. You teleport around the world and then wander around your room in a natural way. I do expect this to be a concern for some VR users however, and I know there are a subset of players who dislike any form of teleport-only gameplay. As the narrative progresses, things seem to go from bad to worse for the protagonist, but luckily you gain various skills in order to help solve certain puzzles in the world. There are two bracelets which you pick up in the opening hours. One attracts certain objects, while the other repels, and you need to use these mechanics to help you progress. I found the puzzles during the first two hours of play to be satisfying and not too taxing as the game eased you into the more complex sides of game play. During the end of my first two-hour play session, I certainly found myself beginning to struggle with a few sections. This part for example took me quite a while to work my way through and it wasn't until I found a particular object that I was able to progress the scene. However, overall the gradual increase in difficulty and onboarding of the gameplay mechanics was among the things I found most impressive during these initial two hours. Many of the puzzles are environmental, encouraging you to explore the current areas you find yourself in. This is a great way to absorb some of the locations, which brings me on to my next point, graphics. Environmentally, the graphical fidelity is nicely done. The locations are pleasant enough to explore, and at moments I was truly impressed with how certain sections looked. There is nothing here that will truly blow you away in 2021, but the graphics do their job well enough. Character models are functional and don't seem out of place in the world. However, there can certainly be some slightly janky and less than impressive animations in places, which is unfortunate yet understandable for an independently produced project. In terms of sound, I found this to be another high point. The environmental sounds are perfect for the scene you're experiencing, and moments of true presence were definitely experienced. The music is also well done. Subtle, ambient, and non-distracting musical interludes accompany your progression through the game. Physical interaction is something of a mixed bag. There are certainly objects you can pick up and examine, 
but at times, I did feel a little stifled by the lack of interactivity on certain other items. Drawers and cupboards serve only as decoration as far as I can see and offer no interaction whatsoever. Although disappointing, this isn't entirely unexpected either, although something I think important to note. During my initial play session, I did run across a couple of small bugs. Examples of this are objects, crucial for a puzzle, disappearing and not reappearing in their default position, as usually happens. Also, a couple of times I did accidentally glitch past gates which were intended to be unpassable until I had solved a particular puzzle. None of these things concerned me too much, and I expect these will be fixed quite quickly by the developers without issue. In terms of performance, the game was running perfectly fine. I switched between 120 and 90 Hz in my index, with both modes running well. Certain sections would run at a native 120 or 90 FPS, while others would drop into reprojection, settling on 60 or 45. The important aspect however was that there were no noticeable spikes or sudden dropped frames which can cause distracting hitches. I didn't really have any performance issues overall. In conclusion, I expect to revisit Wright, the Eye of Atlantis soon, and progress a little further in the narrative. There is enough there to make me curious as to how the story progresses, and I'm interested to see more of the puzzles, as some of them were genuinely intriguing in their presentation. If you're looking for a more accessible mist or a puzzle-based narrative experience with mythical and historical supernatural overtones, then I have little problem recommending this title so far. I have not currently been told the price of this title, so I'll post a comment on this video with an update once I'm aware of this. Look out for a no commentary playthrough of a small section of the game in a few days, and thank you for watching these first impressions of Wright, the Eye of Atlantis. Well that's pretty much it for this video. Please hesitantly tap the like button, and don't forget to subscribe for more concise and informative VR content. You can also join our Discord by clicking on the link in the description of this video. And, as always, I'll catch you on the flippity flip.